John from there. And they take the bracket also. And what is the number there? 666. Number 666. What is that number? It is Satan's number. Antichrist. Yes. Antichrist, Satan's number. Now, even though, uh, well, I don't say it's a biblical interpretation, but I'm just looking at it. What is that number 666? Antichrist. Number of the Satan. And the Bible says, and that is the number of the animal, the beast. Now, this number of the beast, the number 666 that we all know, normally it represents the number of the Satan. Right? Now, where does it appear? Now, look at that. The moment when we began to talk about the Holy Eucharist, when Jesus said, this is the first and the important preaching on the Holy Eucharist. Therefore, the split in the church did not start with the, uh, Martin Luther King. It was not with any theologians after that. The split in the church, the division in the church or the division in the, among the believers started when Jesus affirmed on the Holy Eucharist. He said, if you don't eat my body, if you don't drink my blood, and you have no life eternal, and many left to him. There is a division altogether. And who brings about this division? The evil one, the Satan. That's why even now, there is a lot of opposition about the Holy Eucharist. Even today, you know, uh, though it is very casual, when somebody came and received the Holy Communion, I was observing, I found that person going with that in the hand. Then, you know, my eyes began to follow what this guy is going to do with that. Because even if we Catholics sometimes we forget to realize the holy presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament in the living bread, the satanic worshippers, they know it. The black mass people, they know it. They certainly take the Holy Eucharist and use it for the satanic worship. Desecrating. Because they know there is a power. The story is being said that, you know, the satanic worshippers, they used to regularly come in disguise and uh, take the Blessed Sacrament and take it in the hand and then take it and give it to the satanic worshippers. The black mass people for which big money was being given. One day this girl, it so happened, she couldn't come for the Mass. So she happened to be late. So she managed to uh, maybe bribe or manipulate the sacristan to tell you that, give me one host, no? Uh, you know, I'm teaching catechism, so I want to tell the children how the host will look like and all that thing. Give me one host. So the sacristan innocently thought and took a host from the sacristy, not the consecrated one, and took a host and uh, gave it to this lady and she practiced and very cleverly and uh, gave it to the leader of the black mass the evil priest the moment he opened and touched she was so violent and angry and killed that lady how come that you cheat me because he could identify there is no presence of Jesus in that because there is a simple host without being consecrated my brother, my sister, that is the power, the power of the Holy Eucharist. That's why when we receive the Holy Communion, healings are taking place, miracles are taking place, power is coming. Therefore, Jesus said, affirming in the Eucharistic discourse, in the Gospel of John chapter 6, I am the living bread and many people left him. Even today, many people, they come and stand outside the church. And they will be watching all the, uh, all the videos and sending messages and all that thing. And they claim they have come to the church because they cannot believe the affirmation of the holy presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And sometimes we, it's a bit embarrassing to see that, you know, many of the, most of you are doing that. When you come to receive the Holy Communion, I've seen people very respectfully putting one hand in the other communion 
while some others they just casually take as if you are plucking a mango or taking a cigarette or making a taking a toffee from there without giving the due respect for the blessed sacrament the body of jesus christ which is a blessed sacrament whether it is corona time where is given the hand or not some people with all their mobile phone with their handkerchief which they wipe everywhere and it is also there and they show hand like this where to keep the blessed sacrament remember where the angels were bowing down the holy eucharist the blessed sacrament every time even though we are receiving receive it with respect and due honor some people they receive it and on the way they take it and wipe their hand and go away do you know why when you are receiving the holy communion why there are somebody call the hold the communion plate over there even one little small particle shall not be falling down because that is also the pres full presence of jesus that's why you see on the altar the priests are very careful why that's why there is a cloth spread on the altar here you will see something like this this is called corporal in latin in english also corpus means body we know the feast of corpus christi the body of christ so corpus in latin it means the body corporal is a cloth spread over there so that even a fine piece of the holy eucharist if it's there you will see the priest you know taking out and receiving it because there is a full presence of jesus and we are privileged nowadays my brothers and sisters maybe because of the corona it started with the sars when it started in a, in in singapore and china the communion in the hand otherwise it was always on the tongue people kneeling down even when i visited china though i went stealthily underground and i had the privilege to offer the holy mass in the cathedral in china in beijing mary immaculate cathedral along with the archbishop fu and then in the church in china i saw at the you know uh, yeah here there are like this rails all along communion rail and a white cloth is uh, decked on that and people come in line three times kneeling down in i'm telling in china where we thought this communist china where there is persecution and three times one after another kneeling bowing down and then come and kneel down and when they are kneeling down uh, you know like this suppose it is spread here they will be holding the cloth like this and uh, holding like this so that not even a small particle may fall down holding the uh, the cloth like this and receiving the holy communion in the tongue and they go back go and kneel down reverently and even though for various other reasons even though we have mitigated a lot of things yet it does not mean the reverence the power or the presence of the holy eucharist reduced jesus present very much in the presence of holy eucharist hallelujah yeah. hallelujah 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 and to realize more about a little more of the holy eucharist of course you we have a very detailed description in the gospel of saint john as we read in chapter 6 i just take you to luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 verse 13 onwards this is the incident of uh, incident on the way to emmaus on the way to emmaus if you have got your bible so you can open it and see luke chapter 24 the last chapter i think and then uh, verse 13 13 13 13 one 3 yeah now on the same day uh. two of them were going to a village uh. called emmaus okay about 7 miles from jerusalem uh -huh. and talking with each other uh. about all these things uh. that had happened uh. while they were talking and discussing uh. jesus himself uh. came near and went with them while they were talking and discussing okay Uh, is that the same way in some bible you will see while they were talking and disputing so it is not discussing sometimes it is disputing also 
if you are talking about the word of god disputing over that it will not give grace so they had no peace also these disciples on the way going to a mouse so were they talking and discussing go ahead but their eyes were kept from recognizing him their eyes were kept from recognizing him continue he said to them uh -huh. what are you discussing with each other yes. while you walk along uh -huh. they stood still looking sad uh -huh. then one of them whose name was leopas uh -huh. answered him and you the only stranger in jerusalem does not know the things that have taken place there in these days uh -huh. he asked them what things they he asked them, what things jesus as if he did not know about all that you know just asking what things continue they replied uh -huh. the things about jesus of nazareth the things about jesus of nazareth the things about jesus of nazareth continue who was a prophet mighty indeed uh -huh. Uh -huh. and word before god uh -huh. and all the people uh -huh. and how a chief priest and leaders uh -huh. handed him uh -huh. over to the command to death yes. and crucified him uh -huh. but we had hope that he was the one to redeem israel uh -huh. yes and beside all this uh -huh. it is now the third day since these things took place uh -huh. moreover some women and other group astonished us mm. they were at the tomb early this morning uh -huh. and when they were did not find this body there they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels go ahead who said that uh -huh. he was alive mm. some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said go ahead but they did not see him then he said to them oh how foolish you are and how slow of heart of belief now oh, how foolish we are how foolish we are what is the meaning foolish no intelligence how foolish we are the meaning we will get the psalmist says the fool says in his heart there is no god above me psalm psalm 53 and verse 1 and 2 is that there fool say in their hearts ah. there is no god fool says in his heart there is no god so what is how foolish there is no god why he died we thought he is the one to redeem israel but he disappointed us so i can understand that the fool says in his heart there is no god above me and that is why the psalm says give me wisdom o lord in my inner self give me wisdom o lord in my inner self that i may recognize you okay we come back to luke now luke chapter 24 and where will we stop he said he asked them ah. what things they replied ah. so which yes the things about jesus of nazareth uh -huh. who was a prophet mightily indeed uh -huh. and word before god and all the people okay and how a chief priest and leaders handed him over uh -huh. to a condemned to death uh -huh. and crucified him uh -huh. but we had hoped that he was we, we, we read all that yes go ahead 25 Then he said to them, uh, "Oh, how foolish you are, yes. and how slow to slow of heart to uh, believe all." So that is what number one, foolish. Why foolish? We don't believe, and we are not. And secondly, how slow we are. How slow we are when the whole world is going so fast. We are yet slow, slow in understanding and experiencing God. Okay, go ahead. and how slow of heart to ah. believe all that prophets have declared continue was it not necessary ah. that the messiah should suffer these things yes. and then enter his glory uh -huh. so was it not necessary therefore this is the lenten season we are coming closer to the passion week was it not necessary that the messiah should suffer all these go through the passion and enter his glory my brother my sister there is no glory there is no ecstasy 
without the passion so these sufferings in our life problems in our life sicknesses it is all leading to that experience of the ecstasy continue then beginning with moses uh -huh. and all the prophets uh -huh. he interpreted to them uh -huh. the things about himself in all the scriptures so that's what we also today you know from moses on was we had been interpreting also no so from moses on was okay till the prophets so he explained everything one by one i told you moses the old lawgiver the moses who was crying there jesus the no new lawgiver moses in the old testament a boy who had no right to live he was supposed to be killed jesus also in the new testament we know he had no right to live by the order of uh, king herod all the boys we were two and a half years were to be killed see the parallel coming there from moses to the new testament and remember if saint paul said very clearly in the second reading of the mass today moses led the people so they were baptized in moses they all passed under the cloud therefore in the new testament we are passing under the cloud which is jesus christ we are baptized in the blood of jesus christ therefore we are all participating if that was in the, in the old testament the red sea in the new testament in the blood of jesus we receive a new baptism continue as they came near the village uh -huh. to which they were going uh -huh. he walked ahead uh -huh. as if he was going on this is a trick of jesus sometimes he played trick like that you know so as he came near the village where he was so he pretended as if he is going where he is going where is he going nowhere <laughs> nowhere sometimes in our lives also we may think he is going away simply clap and hey jesus where are you going i know you came to see me you know <laughs> why you are going away i know you cannot go away because you love me i know you cannot leave me because i know you love me and there is that love i was asking them whether you know that song or no i don't know jeevitha no no jeevitha manda ah, okay ah, come come i got something yeah yeah జీవితమంతా సర్వమునివే ఓ నాయేసయ్యా నా ప్రాణము ప్రాణము కౌంతమునివే ఓ నాయేసయ్యాంతా సర్వమునివే ఓ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ in 93 i believe so when we were coming uh, we had a team of seven members so we were in the train so one young girl maybe about 10 year old she came singing this song clapping on her you know this was her instrument tapping on that stomach and it sounded nice for me so i listened to it and uh, we had a small uh, tape recorder at that time with us so when she was singing in the the one who was helping in the music ministry babu so he said father we will learn that so we should show on the small tape recorder as she was singing and then after she finished we replayed it when we replayed it maybe this girl hearing first time her voice this was in 92 93 and she was curious looking at it and then the train started moving so she ran to go out and as the train was moving away i saw along with the train she was also running like this hearing her voice 
she was coming begging alms. We gave her alms. But I saw she was curious about that sound. I took up the small tape recorder, I handed it to this girl. So, as if she go to heaven, I heard she was holding it and listening it. The train was passing away and moving ahead. Now, I do not know where this girl must have been, what must have happened of her. I every day remember and pray for her. And this song was still echoing in my ear. Father has got something in there. <laughs> you got the words over there. You know, it made a lot of meaning. At that time, I did not know anything about Telugu. Absolutely nothing. But I asked her, who taught you? Some sisters taught, it seems. It is very meaningful even today. Can we sing there once again? Jeevita Manta Sarva Muni Devo Nai Saiya Nagana Mugana Mugalanya Muni Devo Nai Saiya Yesu Naman Jai 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 Kristu Naman Jai 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 Yesu Naman My song and my breath and my life. My aim is you, O oh Lord. Okay, now, anyway, with this, we are coming with the apostle. I was trying to tell him, he may pretend as if he's going, stop him. You're right. You're right. I told you yesterday also, the blind man sitting by the uh, roadside on the way to Jericho, Jesus was going. He cried, a blind man, he can stop the creator, almighty God. With his cry, you can stop the creator, almighty God. A woman with a hemorrhage was suffering from hemorrhage for 12 years, 12 years. No healing, no medicine. Imagine you ladies, if you have got a continuous bleeding for 12 years, loss of hemoglobin, loss of blood, insomnia, uh, no blood, no strength, pale and weak. No strength even to walk. And this lady in her weakness, desiring to touch Jesus, and she was stretching out her hand and Jesus was moving ahead. And the Bible says she could only reach out to the, to the tip of the finger, to the fringe of the garment of Jesus. Touch her. Jesus stopped. He stopped. Couldn't go further. Power of the powerless. Power of the powerless. By the single hand of a weak woman, you can touch God, the creator. He will stop for you. And he will turn back and ask, who touched me? Who touched me? Clever people will think in the normal way, Lord, what foolish you are. So many people are pressing around you and how come that you ask, who touched me? Someone touched me. I know power has gone out of me. And this woman with fear and trembling came forward. Tattadunyana nakilesha 
തെറ്റുക നിഞ്ഞു പൊറുക്കണമേ വത്സരം എത്ര കഴിഞ്ഞു ഞാൻ തീരാ ശാപം പേറുന്നു How many years that I was bearing this curse upon me. Bear with me and forgive me. I touch you. Jesus turned back and I began to believe. Jesus must have bent down and lifted her up and touched her on the forehead and kissed her and said, Yes, my daughter. My daughter. He said, My daughter. Your faith has made you well. the bible says that very moment she perceived the healing within her did not go for a medical examination did not go to consult the gynecologist the bible says that very moment she perceived the healing within her power the power of the powerless the blind man the woman with the hemorrhage similarly my brother my sister you will have the power the power of your faith by which you can stop him and tell him so they said stay with us today lord stay with us today lord oh go ahead we are with the luke now so but they urged him strongly uh, uh-huh. saying stay with us yes. because it is almost evening uh-huh. and the day is now nearly over so stay with us is evening the day is over remember not for him is for me is for me is evening is for me it's dark is for me the day is getting over not for him so i am reflecting my feeling pour it out before the lord how he stayed continue so he went in to stay with them uh-huh. when he was at the table with them uh-huh. he took bread uh-huh. blessed and broke it now you will see the celebration of the holy eucharist the first eucharistic celebration after the resurrection after the resurrection you see the same words which we utter in the holy mass for the consecration and the eucharistic prayer read it again when he was at the table when he was at the table with yes. them uh-huh. he took bread uh-huh. blessed and broke it uh-huh. and gave it to them then their eyes were up opened uh-huh. and they recognized him uh-huh. and he vanished from their sight okay they said to each other uh-huh. were not our hearts burning with uh-huh. us uh-huh. while he was talking to on to us on uh-huh. the road yes while he was opening the scriptures to uh-huh. says uh-huh. that same hour they got up and returned to jerusalem okay now so we will come back to again in the holy eucharist two main elements two main parts one is a breaking of the word of god the ministry of the word of god secondly the breaking of the bread of life the ministry of the body and blood of jesus now where was the first part as they were walking along as they were walking along was the first part of the eucharist they were discussing and then jesus explained from moses till the prophet the word of god breaking of the word of god now what happens when you hear the word of god the apostles recollecting afterwards they said were not our hearts burning were not see you see verse 32 and they said to one another was not our heart burning with us while he spoke to us on the way that is why you may ask father why don't you start the healing immediately when the mass was prolonging today you must have been thinking father we came for a holy mass we thought it will be a sweet and short for half an hour how long you are going on preaching and preaching yes it is not that i was unaware of it when you hear the word of god when the breaking of the word of god hearts will be burning like the burning bush that came down that is burning the heart and the life of moses too and when you hear the word of god your hearts will be burning and then god said moses remove your shoes remove your shoes why normally we think because you are standing in a holy place 
one more step ahead. I am used to walking with my shoes. So when I am wearing my shoes, when I am having my footwear, my legs will take me wherever it goes. So I am comfortable, I can go the way I like. But remember my brother, my sister, take off your shoes and walk through the purple road there. Then you will feel your leg pinching. <laughs> That means God is telling you, Moses, until today, until today, you decided where to go and how to go. That's why you started hitting that Egyptian there. You killed him over there. You went to rule over there, your Hebrews over there. Because you were walking with your own shoes. Now God is telling Moses, Moses, I will set pace for your speed. I will set the pace for your speed. How you should go and where you should go, I will decide. Remove your shoes. That is your protection. I will take you now. Take my shoes. So now you will be putting your foot into my shoes. Empathy in psychology. Carl Rogers psychology says, this is empathy. Men feeling, you know, putting your shoes in the other, uh, uh, the, uh, your foot in the shoes of the other one which means you feel the same way the other one will feel you get the same feelings of the other one other one is poor poor thing bachara. that is sympathy that is sympathy nobody wants sympathy at a poor man what do you want that was a sympathy with a rich man had over Lazarus sympathy will not take you to heaven somebody begging there take it sympathy that is miseria in Latin. Miseria. While empathy is misericordia. Misericordia. Cordis in Latin means heart. Misericordia. That means you know it is coming from the heart. My heart and your heart is beating in the same way. I can feel the pulse of your heart. I can feel the warmth of the blood of your heart. I can feel the strength and force of your heart. And that is misericordia. So nobody wants misery and a better a poor thing. From that one more step. That is what in the story of the good Samaritan, the priest Miseria, the Levite said Miseria. But when the Samaritan came, Misericordia, he came down from the animal. He stopped his journey and went down. He took his own wine and oil, poured it on the man and bandaged him and he came down from the animal and placed him over that placed him into that place and went along with him into the inn served him stayed with him over there how long until he needed and then before leaving and he gave the in uh, the the, the uh, uh, i would say uh, maybe the atm card number also and the mobile number also and told him and took the insurance policy also and paid the first premium also and said if you need anything more don't ask him don't ask him misericordia he has nothing because he was stripped naked looted of everything half dead nothing he has got don't ask him i am there i am there this is jesus i am there with you and this is what we call the misericordia, the empathy. Therefore, Moses, until now you had your shoes, you don't know the pain of others. So God said, I hear their cry, misericordia. So hereafter, you should feel the pain of the people. Egypt, my people there, remove your shoes. You become a new person. Now coming. So the first part I said, I was telling you purpose is therefore I was acting in the homily so that your heart should burn before you begin to come closer to the altar and when you stretch out your hand when you stick out your tongue to receive the body and blood of Jesus your heart is already burning the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit the love of God and then when your heart is already burning then you will begin to think I need more love yes Will you really feel that way? Uh huh.
So I had my hair tucked up there with my might and power and I'm arguing with my husband like this. Mm -hmm. More of me in my life. Now when you go back, your husband will be waiting there and then you will be going. <laughs> then your husband will look at you. Yeah. <laughs> then you will see more of you in my life. Really? Huh? How you got it? I will not tell you. You come to church. But tomorrow when you come, I will not be here. <laughs> All right. Okay, now. So, this is what we call a transformation. When, this is what we call, you know, in biology, you call it metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Remember, when the, uh, the, the, the butterfly, it lays egg and the pupa is formed. And before the pupa is a worm, isn't it? caterpillar is a worm and the caterpillar ugly thing eating up all the leaves and so huge and fat walking like this so moti hoti and then after some time you will think how long I was eating and eating and became so moti now what to do now one day you will come to the church and hear the word of God more of you in my life so you will decide enough is enough let me go for fasting this caterpillar also decided the same way. So decided to stop eating and started fasting and made a cocoon of itself and got inside and no contact with anybody. Switched off the mobile phone also, shut the door also and then praying and praying and praying and praying and then hearts were burning and burning and burning and then prayed more of you in my life more power more life more power prayed and prayed and prayed after the at the end of the fasting and prayer and the cocoon will be broken out of the cocoon what got inside was such a moti worm caterpillar and opened the cocoon and coming out of it with beautiful colorful wings light thin legs fly and now you tell this caterpillar you had been very friendly with those tender leaves no very fresh why don't you go and eat it caterpillar oh the butterfly will look, look at it like this and will gently fly and uh, with a small syringe there kiss the flower and say sorry did I hurt you no and move to the next flower next flower become so light so light in the life 
our lives will change what happened to the caterpillar how it became butterfly more of you in my life rather than being hooked on to the earth rather change transformation butterfly and more of you so the hearts were burning and then next even more important i'm coming to that one so they said they were not our hearts be burning can we read once again luke chapter 24 verse maybe 30 i believe yeah 3030 when they were at the table read that part when they were at the table ah, that mic needs a healing <laughs> when he was at the table with them ah. he took bread ah. blessed Number and one, broke it see in the holy mass also we will be using the same formula he took bread blessed it broke it gave thanks to the father and gave it to the disciples read it the same way huh. when he when he was at the table huh. with them huh. he took bread huh. blessed and broke it blessed and broke it and gave it to them huh. then their eyes were open okay now hold on one second father can we can you give me that missile second you get to play see we read like this at the time he was betrayed he ended willingly okay now the eucharist prayer goes he took bread giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples is not the same thing read there when i said the first eucharistic celebration of jesus after the resurrection and then when he was at the table with them uh, he took the bread uh, blessed and broke it uh, and gave it to them uh, and their eyes were open and their eyes were open first they, part heart is burning second part eyes open open to see the reality as it is when you attend the mass the husband eyes will be open to see your wife as your better half with the same shoes as she is feeling the wife will be eyes will be open to see your husband how you made the commitment at the time of the matrimony and the children's eyes will be open to look at the parents honor your father and mother that you may live long on earth to remind you of the fourth commandment the parents eyes will be open to see that you are the visible presence of god on earth for your children eyes will be opened and now much more important here their eyes were open what happened when jesus took the bread and broke it when he broke it their eyes were open the next sentence he vanished from there he vanished from there am i right yes father okay ah he said and uh, bless ah or oh, the last part of it okay now and knew him and their eyes were open they knew him and he vanished out of their sight normally what should happen remember they did not know this was jesus at this moment their eyes were open they recognized him suddenly he vanished what should have been the reaction of the apostle or the disciples a normal should be running like this no where did you go should be going looking for him where are you going where are you going? say no we did not see you in a show me your hand whether it's nail mark or not jesus stop they did not hold him back they did not run behind him can you tell me why why they did not go behind him they recognized him where where he recognized him you are right you are coming to it very close to it yes exactly at the breaking of the bread recognized now where is jesus now very good where is jesus now in the bread jesus is in the bread so even though he vanished they were still seeing the presence of jesus in the bread and this is the eucharistic presence this is the reason why we have the eucharistic adoration this is the reason why we keep the blessed sacrament in the tabernacle eucharistic presence because their eyes were opened and he broke the bread and they saw jesus in the
bread that is broken and that is going to happen right now so that presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist is going to be invited on the altar in the Eucharistic adoration and that is there is power in the adoration that is why you go to the adoration room and pray there because their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus in the blessed sacrament every time when you are receiving that bread in your hand also you recognize Jesus recognize Jesus why remember their eyes were open hearts were burning and miracles will happen healings will happen and they had no more sorrow they were no more sadness but they were at peace then later they went to Jerusalem to share this experience that's what after the mass the mass is ended go and love the world what are you going to do you're going to share the Emmaus experience so don't go empty-handed praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. So now we are going to have the Eucharistic adoration for your healing prayer for the deliverance for the anointing of the Holy Spirit and that you get the empowerment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. We are ready for getting ready for the adoration.